Okay, it is time for Markets Mondays, um, and we're going to cross to Dylan Bester in just a moment or two. Now, whether you're a new trader who's looking for a safe place to start, or you're an experienced trader who's looking for low spreads, multi-assets, and high-tech, you will find that Markets.com suits you perfectly. A special offer to everybody who's listening this morning. If you follow the link on cliffcentral.com and you register with markets.com, it'll all be on our website. Just go to cliffcentral.com and follow the link from there. Just by doing that, you will get a 30% bonus on your deposit, which is very good. Where else are you getting free money? Script, uh, you know, it, it'll all pop up as, the, as like a hyperscript thing. It'll all come up as a, like a thing that you need to click on and you go through there and it'll it'll just do all the, the population for you so you don't have to send an email like we used to say before right leanne much easy, better easy easy so the crypto market has experienced some swings over the last period and the bubble is about to burst according to some people others say this is a fundamental crash Still others are hugely positive about what's going on in crypto, believe it or not. So to help us understand that and a whole lot more is Dylan Bester. He joins us to give us some insight. He's a co-founder and a director at Sky Castle International Investments. He's also a business partner of Markets.com. And he always enjoyed the fast-paced environment of global financial markets. And he specializes in trading across multiple assets and multiple asset classes. So Dylan, it's good to see you. How are you? Very good in yourself. Hi. Awesome. 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 Nice to see you, man. So, so Dylan, I mean, I gave a very brief intro there about what's going on in crypto, for example. People are so nervous right now. Um, you know, we had this FTX thing which happened um, and which is dominating the headlines. So maybe we should start there. In the crypto space, what, what actually happened in, at FTX? And maybe you can explain it better than I would be able to. Okay, great. Yeah, let me, I'm just going to give a very broad outline and sort of explain my rationale as to what's happened. Um, there's still sure. quite a bit that's unfolding and I think there's going to be a bit more to come. Um, but in a nutshell, um, FTX was, was effectively a cryptocurrency exchange. Um, it was listed in the Bahamas as a cryptocurrency exchange. Um, and there's a gentleman behind all of it by the name of Sam, Sam Bankman-Fried. Um, he set up a, an actual um, quantitative trading business a year before um, this FTX launched, um, which is only launched in 2019. So all very recent, um, all COVID orientated. Um, and this this hedge fund, well, this, this quantitative trading strategy fund that he launched was called Alameda Research. And this research firm focused on, on risk-free trading, uh, risk arbitrage. Um, and, and effectively what that means is um, the likes of a, of a currency or cryptocurrency exchange offers buyers, willing buyers and willing sellers, the opportunity to, to exchange their cryptocurrency via a platform or a medium. Um, and, mm -hmm. and risk arbitrage takes advantage of that. So it, it allows for, for you to take buy on one platform, sell on another platform and make the difference. Obviously, this is quite a sophisticated strategy and it takes a lot of sort of tech to do this. Um, I'm right. giving you this bit of background because that started in 2018. And then one year later, in 2019, they launched FTX. The same gentleman, Sam Banking Fried. And effectively, what happened then is, is for a risk arbitrage strategy to work well, you need multiple venues or multiple platforms to use. And you can always play them off against each other. Now, with him launching his own platform, he obviously decided that he would only use that one platform, which would make his strategy sort of unusable in that instance. Um, mm -hmm. which most likely led him to take directional risk and, and take more one-sided bets um, for cryptocurrency itself. Um, and as this continued, I mean, the winter of 2021 was when effectively they, they started getting very long and directional in terms of Bitcoin. This was the actual hedge fund using the exchange, the one exchange FTX, um, to buy and sell, basically just buying. And they used this on a leveraged basis. When they, when they say leveraged, I mean, effectively, yeah, leverage as a concept is, is if I have $100 and I place it on, on, on Bitcoin, I'm allowed a form of leverage on that $100. It's like a debt to asset that I'm right. going to acquire. So I've put yeah. down $100 and in Bitcoin, I'm now able to, to have a position worth $1,800, which creates a lot of leverage. It's 18 times. And this is called gearing your money effectively. So during this time, I mean, Crypto could have Bitcoin itself. I'm going to reference Bitcoin because it's an easy price mark. There's a, there's a lot of crypto coins out there as well, but it was around $16,700. And over this time of 
six months into March, the cryptocurrency went from 16,700 to around $60,000. Now, if you had used gearing and, and leverage, you effectively would have made loads of money. You would have gone all the way from 16,000 to, to 60,000 in the space of six months, and you would have been on top of the world. Um, but on the, on the alternative side of this, you've got that hundred dollars would have become a lot worth a lot more. But mm -hmm. if, if that market collapsed and we saw crypto come as of the last, let's call it four weeks when, when everything went sort of pear shaped here, yeah, um, we saw crypto yeah. come down to around 16,800, $18,000. That means that there's been, I would effectively say that it's gone from 67,000 odd to 16,000, which is a loss of value of around 75%. So crypto has lost 75% right. of its value effectively as of mm -hmm. last four weeks ago. That would have caused that $1,800 to be at a loss of, you would have lost $1,350. And now remember, you've only put down $100. So you right. effectively owe somebody $1,250 because of that leverage you've used. Um, <laughs> and and that's that's effectively the scenario that's occurred here. They've taken one side of bets and, and on the Bitcoin price losing a lot of value it's it's allowed they now need to top up their accounts they now need to make sure that they can fund their position um and this this create this was one of the factors that created this they also um issued their own ftx had an ftt token that allowed them to on loan um on their on their exchange um more crypto um and that loaning of crypto then allowed guys to trade more and, and create more leverage so it's a big leveraged bubble and effectively it has burst 75% loss of value is certainly a, a bursting of a bubble um, sure. in, any, in any sense of the word. Um, so this only came to, to realization this last few weeks because the crypto price was effectively at or below the prices where they purchased yeah. it originally. Um, and they got, they got basically margin called is the term. Um, and this, this means that they now have to fund their position. That the losses would have been a market to market loss as well as uh, a margin loss. Um, okay, so just two two quick things. First of all, I mean, leverage and gearing is something that has been used in all markets, not just in crypto. You can do this with gold, you could do it with sh shares and stocks, you could do it with futures, hedge, hedge uh, trading and all that kind of thing. Um, so it's not unusual that this would happen. Of course, you just have to be prepared that if it doesn't go your way, you're going to owe more than you put in in the first place. Is that right? That is correct. Um, not in every sense of the word when you do need to have sort of risk management tools or at least a stop loss or something that protects your capital. Um, or at least right. once it goes up to a certain extent, you, you're reducing some capital that you have and, or some profits and you, you're keeping a decent sort of balance sheet on your side. Um, and this, I mean, if you, if you look at the, the actual FTX um, board members, well, you have the CEO, um, Caroline Ellison, that's I mean, in an interview, she was saying that she basically uses elementary math and um, risk management tools like stop losses aren't an effective um, form of risk management, which right. obviously shows the, the lack of sort of oversight or the lack of um, ability to, to protect their clients at the end anyway. I mean, each, each of these exchanges uh, will have their own set of rules and they will allow different amounts of leverage and gearing depending on their client base. And also depending yeah. on the client, on how much risk they want their clients to have. So in cryptocurrency, I mean, across the board and depending on who you're trading by, will have their own set of rules and regulations that they act on. And it's a very new industry, which is why I think there's a lot still to learn here. All right. So, so let's just talk about crypto generally, because this has obviously affected the crypto markets very badly. So what does this mean? to people who are still holding Bitcoin, people who are on other exchanges, people who've got Ethereum, uh, people who have some, some of the other altcoins. What does that mean to them? Look, I mean, I think it's a massive shock to confidence here. We, we've had a, an idea where you've got a cryptocurrency and do I think the, the technology is valid and there's a space in the economy? Most certainly, yes. Um, when it will come to be more widely used or used for a better purpose um, than speculating and trading, um, I think, yes, there certainly will be a value. Um, as, a, as a case in point, I'd like to compare it to sort of like your, your 2000, 2001.com crash, where you had all these new tech businesses that started up and there was also lots of money going around. So, so in the environment we were in over the last two years in COVID, you had the likes of 
stimulus in the market. You had people getting free checks in America for every month, sitting at home. Um, so they took up sort of daytime jobs and, and became traders, which allowed them to obviously yeah. go into all these old coins and create new old coins. And, and so in my view there, it's, it's a new industry that's up and coming. Um, and all that that dot-com bubble needed was a bit of regulation and a bit of, I mean, effectively at the end of the day, you want to protect your clients and you want to protect your customers to make sure that they're always um, going to be around. Um, you don't want it blowing up like we've seen here. Um, so in terms of crypto as a whole, I do think there's a place for it. Um, I think some some people take it less seriously than others, um, launching their own altcoins and that. But but as a whole, there's definitely a space um, a space for it. And it's, it just needs a bit more regulation, a bit more oversight to bring that confidence back. To know that a company like FTX or, or Alameda Research can't just dip into their client deposits that aren't supposed to be mm -hmm. trading or being a managed solution and, and take it for their, their hedge fund where they have a discretionary mandate. So it would be interesting to see what type of mandates they would have entered into their clients with and what protection their clients had, what guarantees they gave their client, if any. Um, and that's that's still to unfold, which is why I don't think this is the end of it, but it mm -hmm. has caused a lot of um, concern around the Bitcoin price, what Bitcoin's right. worth. Um, and, and it's generally now at this time where you've got a lot of people that, that need to have confidence against in the industry and they need to then start getting that through regulation, certainly, and, and mass adoption. Okay, I want to I want to quickly move on to some other things because there's a lot that I want to tap into while we've got you. Um, what do you see happening to the RAND? Because we've seen it strengthen over the last few weeks. Where do you think that the RAND is going to go for going looking forward from here? And which currencies are you most nervous about? Um, first of all, I'm, I'm nervous of the dollar, um, just because the do dollar is generally strong now. They've got um, they've got basically rising interest rates in the US. The rest of the world's trying to copy them. So everyone is is effectively looking to to position their money out of sort of let's call it the equity market and move into more of a dollar position. Um, so the dollars are basically being held quite closely and, and invested in the US which is our main competitor mm -hmm. to our rand at the moment because everyone wants there's a massive demand for dollars um, and in South Africa right. I definitely see a stronger rand on the, on the horizon we've got a very good uh, um, trade balance a very good trade surplus at the moment um, we've just been upgraded um, on Friday from SMB global to actually um, a positive outlook which so there's quite a few positive factors for South Africa we'll continue to raise interest rates um, to follow the Federal Reserve. Um, we're only getting to sort of pre-COVID interest rates now um, and our next meeting for the MPC will probably get there. Um, and this will keep the RAND competitive. Our, our local bond market and our high yield bond market is, is one of the most attractive in the world at the moment. Um, and there's massive opportunities in our bonds, which, which generally will attract investors into our RAND, our RAND currency. All right, that's interesting because I remember when, <laughs> whenever we would talk about uh, the, the ratings, you know, the, the various kind of gr what grade rating we were, um, it used to be a huge story. Now when we go up, um, it doesn't seem to make the headlines, but whenever we came down, it was like the biggest news story ever. Um, what's changed there? I mean, yeah, definitely. Um, I think we've also got what's changed is it's, it's been... Um, we haven't had a positive outlook for quite a while. It's been downgraded. I mean, I wouldn't say much has changed from a, a political standpoint, but from a from a trade balance and a surplus point of view, we, we uh, our tax revenue collection is at its highest we've ever seen. Um, our exports mm -hmm. are at its highest we've ever seen. So we started to actually make money, and and in that scenario, I mean, we don't have much debt to GDP. So South Africa as a country hasn't extended our balance sheet to a point where. We have to fund a surplus like what happened in the US. No. Well, fund a fund a balance sheet like what's happening in the US and pretty much the rest of Europe. So we're in a very positive position. We're an emerging market. There's a lot of growth potential in South Africa. So it is actually quite a positive outlook in terms of the, the, the general country as a whole. Yes, there are little pockets of, of instability, but as a whole, it's looking pretty good. Um, it's good to see that we we're generating revenue and and We've also now started with our own sort of form of stimulus in the country, which is um, our grant package, where we're starting to yeah. allow the, the low income owners to get to get more. And, and that effectively is going to be a result of, of economic activity because that's going to be spent once again. Um, so it's going to be, create a bit of a, it's like a snowball effect. Um, and I think it's generally quite mm -hmm. positive for the land. 
Um, and the only problem to that is a stronger dollar. Um, but that can't last forever. It's yeah. been very strong for a while, for at least two and a half, three years. So I think that might fade sort of mid next year. Okay, I like it. Well, thanks for thanks for filling us in on those. Is there anything else that you're excited about when it comes to investment at the moment? Because let's face it, there are a lot of people who are looking at all of this going, uh-oh, I just don't know where to put my money. What's safe anymore? And people run to things like gold or government bonds. Um, what would you say are the safest bets you can make in a market like this? So I think the last time we spoke, uh, I did mention that gold, I like gold at that time. Um, it was sitting around $1,640. It's, it's $100 higher now. It's 1740 I still like gold. Mm -hmm. I think we can. I think we can be a bit higher, just given the backdrop okay. of what's going on and the uncertainty. You want something safe like gold. Um, in terms of the market, from an overall perspective, I wouldn't want to take much risk in the equity market and, unless it was short term. Um, just there's okay. a lot of economic changes and a lot of interest, higher interest rates and higher inflation is is not a great place to be investing in in equities and uh, across the board. So. I'd certainly focus on bonds, um, bonds and a bit of gold as a very safe, safe, conservative outlook for now. You might not get the Good. returns you want, but at least, you know, you'll have a bit of safety of your capital over time. Right. And I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's about as close as you're going to get to like straight up advice as, as is possible to dispense with. Of course, you have to make your own decisions. And um, this 100%. does not constitute financial advice. This is all just useful information that you could put into your own machine. And determine the way forward but thank you so much dylan bester um, from sky castle international investments and a business partner of markets.com for a little look at what's been going on especially with the crypto space recently markets mondays brought to you by markets.com they will be taking a little bit of a break and we'll be back on the show again in january remember to follow the link on cliffcentral.com in the meantime to register with markets.com you will get a 30 percent bonus on your deposit and follow them on markets dot com on all their different social media you can find them on uh, markets com sa is basically their their tag uh, that you find them on instagram twitter facebook linkedin and youtube all of that and a whole lot more